If you're a beginner to Godot and its scripting language, GDScript, then this just might help you out. Today, we're working with operators, what they are, and how to use them. What's up, everybody? Welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. This video is continuing with the GDScript tutorial series for those of you who are new to Godot and or scripting in general. Today's topic is operators. Operators are basically used to manipulate, evaluate, compare, or assign values. Now the statement by itself may not mean a whole lot to you, so let's get right into some examples that'll make things a little clearer. We can start off by looking at an operator we already used in the last GDScript tutorial on variables. There we use the equal symbol. Here's a quick example. In this instance, the equal symbol is an assignment operator. That is, it assigns the value of who is the operator, to the variable first string. Let's look at some arithmetic operators next. Yes, that's right. That's all the math stuff that you might not have liked too much in school. We'll start off by creating three variables with integer values and then perform some calculations on them. Now that we have our variables, let's perform an addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus operation on them. First up is the addition, so the uh, result that we can expect from this is going to be 10 plus 5, so it'll be 15. Next up is subtraction, so we can expect the result to be 5, that's 10 minus 5. Next we have multiplication, so we can expect the result to be 10 times 5, so the answer will be 50. Next we have division, so we're going to have a 10 divided by 5, so our result should be 2. And last, we have the modulus result. I'm sure that you're all familiar with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, but modulus is not so common, so let me explain that a little further. Do you remember when you first learned division and work with remainders back in grade school? If so, that's what the modulus operator does. It performs a division on two values and then returns the remainder as a result. So the result of our modulus operation here should be 1, because 10 divided by 3 would give you a remainder of 1. I'll just quickly add in some code so that we can see the results of our calculations in the game. Don't worry about this part as it doesn't have anything to do with today's lesson. Now we can run the game to show our results. And here we can see the results look just like we expect, so great! Let's go ahead and take a look at some comparison operators next since you'll be using those pretty often. All of the results here from using these comparison operators will turn out to be a boolean value. A boolean value is another data type whose value can only be true or false. The first one here, the equality operator, is an important one. This is because you have to make sure to use two equal symbols and not just one. The reason for this is that a single equal symbol is the assignment operator. So for this first one, we can expect our equality result to equal false, because our first integer is not equal to our second integer. Next, we have the inequality operator. So this one is going to return true if the two values aren't equal. So here we can expect the inequality result variable to be true, because first underscore int does not equal second underscore int. Then we also have the greater than and less than operators. So for the greater than result, we can expect this to be true because the first int is bigger than the second int. And for the less than result, we can expect this to be false because the first int is actually, it, once again, it's greater than the second integer, right? It's not less than. Again, I'll quickly edit some code here to show the result in the game. Let's run the game. And then here we can see our results once again. Lastly, we'll look at the AND and OR 
logical operators. The AND operator tests to see if both of two values are true. The OR operator tests to see if only one of two different values are true. So the AND operator will only return the boolean of true if both values are true. Otherwise, it will return false. The OR operator will return true if either of the values are true, which then means that it will only return false if both values are false. Here's a quick example. Here, because our equality result variable is false and our inequality result variable is true, if we AND these two values, we will get false. And if we OR these two values, we will get true. Once again, I'll edit the display code here quickly. Again, just ignore this part. We'll run the game once more. And here we see the results that we expected. So in summary, operators allow us to evaluate and manipulate our values to accomplish whatever our desired goal might be. While we have covered many of the most commonly used operators, there are many more which we didn't cover because it would just take too much time to cover them all. But don't worry because there are many operators that I have never ever used even though I've managed to make complete games from start to finish. If you liked today's video, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on what's coming up next. The sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available for download on my Patreon page. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link will be in the description. Thanks to everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.